quiet village in eastern Myanmar. But this is where, one day in May 2015, Mien Ong, a local farmer, doused himself in petrol, set himself alight, and threw himself on one of these rubbish heaps. He died later in hospital. His relatives think the main reason he killed himself was land. Mien Ong's tale is part of a long history of land disputes that plague this country, just emerging from decades of military rule and economic isolation. In the past, it was not uncommon for land to be confiscated from farmers with little or no compensation and used by the military or given to companies for agribusiness. Today, more than two-thirds of Myanmar's population rely directly or indirectly on farming, so dealing with land conflicts, old and new, will be a huge task for the newly elected government led by Aung San Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy. Myanmar has one of the fastest growing economies in the world, but rising competition for land here could threaten both the political transition and efforts to attract foreign investors to a country rich in resources. The views from this vast construction site soaring over Myanmar's Inlay Lake are as stunning as the backstory behind this site is opaque. This is just a collection of roads and rubble for now, but the plan is for it to host some of the most prestigious hotels in this country in fragile transition from almost half a century of military dictatorship. But as in projects elsewhere in this state, questions loom over the very ownership and the history of the very land on which the ambitions of Myanmar's new rulers are flowering. Me and Ong's relatives say his grievance dated back to 2004. A 14 acre holding where his family grew corn and beans was taken by the military as part of a much larger grab of land, some of which was then given to agricultural companies. From then until 2013, the family had to pay army commanders to till the land, relatives claim. What seems finally to have pushed Mien Ong over the edge, his niece believes, was the rumour, wrong as it turned out, that she'd been arrested for protesting against another alleged land grab. <laughs> Kong San Wu, top civil servant in the vast eastern state of Shan and a former army captain, says he's sorry about what happened to Mien Ong, especially over such a small piece of land that he probably didn't own anyway. But does that make you feel bad that somebody felt so awful about land and land that the, the military was allegedly taken that he took his own life, he burned himself to death in, in public. ပြစစ်အမှန်တော့ဒီမြို့တော့သမဘာကိုပိုင်းမာတယ်လို့ပြောသွားတယ်လူတယောက်ကစီရနေသူဝဲတာဟုတ်ပြီနော်အဲ့
If Miandong's story seems a tragedy born of the past, just a few miles away, trouble is very much in the present on the building site next to Inle Lake, one of the country's premier tourist attractions. Ongjo Mo is fighting the hotel zone which swallowed up his land after the military junta stepped down in 2011. He says the $700 or so the government offered for his 14-acre holding was nowhere near enough. Other villagers who live nearby say they did receive some compensation, but they say that it's not sufficient and they're still struggling. Shan State's top civil servant, Kong San Ung, defends the official record on land. He says the compensation's fair and that people weren't forced to accept it. He says some people used the money they received well, while others wasted or gambled it away. But it's different for the family of Mian Ong, the farmer who killed himself. The family say they started to hear rumours that he drank a lot and had large debts. It's not clear where these came from, and Lu Than, his brother, says he saw no proof that these were true. Instead, in a distant echo across continents of Mohammed Bouazizi, the Tunisian vegetable seller whose self-immolation helped spark the Arab Spring, Luthan sees his dead brother as a kind of martyr and a symbol of lasting injustice. <laughs> Min Ong's case is complex, but it does seem that his anxiety over land was a factor in his decision to kill himself. Myanmar has many more land grabs that need to be resolved to avoid more tragic outcomes like this. Michael Peel, Financial Times, Myanmar. <laughs>